atoms are bonded together to form molecules and the sharing of electrons occurs, we're going to see that because of the electronegativity value that's assigned to an atom, not all atoms share their electrons equally. So electronegativity is just defined as the ability of an atom to pull bonding electrons toward itself. And your book has values listed in a table. So hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. That's fairly small compared to fluorine. Fluorine's electronegativity value is 4.0. And that's the highest value on the electronegativity chart. So fluorine is, I describe fluorine as a bully. It does not share electrons equally. So for example, if hydrogen with its one electron is bonded to fluorine, remember fluorine has seven valence electrons. So the molecule or the bond, oops, that doesn't have an L. The bond between a fluorine atom and a hydrogen atom would look like this. And this shows the sharing of electrons pretty equally. But what we really have, uh, the actual molecule looks more like this. Hydrogen's electron is pulled much closer to fluorine. Because fluorine would like to be a negative one. And if it can't steal an electron to be a negative one, it's going to act like a bully and pull hydrogen's electron toward itself. And so this would be uh, a difference in electronegativity, so 2.1 and 4.0. So the difference between that, if we subtract 4.0 minus 2.1, we get 1.9. That's a fairly substantial large difference in electronegativity. And we're going to see that if there is a big difference between atoms, then the bond is going to be lopsided. So we end up getting an unequal sharing of electrons, or lopsided bond. And I've written here that hydrogen's wimpy. Hydrogen only has one proton in the nucleus, so it can't hold on to its electron very well, as opposed to fluorine, which is element number nine. It's got nine electron, or protons in the nucleus, so it tends to have a better uh, ability to pull electrons toward itself. This concept of polar really has to do with kind of a magnetic behavior, because a, a magnet has a north pole and a south pole, and opposite ends repel each other. I mean, like ends repel each other, and opposite sides of a magnet um, attract each other. So if we had a magnet, we're sort of familiar with positive and negative. So if we put two magnets together with the negative side and the positive side, there would be an attraction here. And so that's really what we're going to talk about when we talk about a bond being polar, because electrons are negative. We have a lopsided bond or really we have a, uh, an uneven distribution of electrons. So we end up with a polar, which is a positive-negative bond. So one side of the bond is more negative. So if we take a look at HF, again, because of where the electrons are on fluorine, this side of the bond is more negative, and because hydrogen, hydrogen's electron is way over here next to fluorine. And this side of the bond is more positive. This is not completely positive and completely negative because they're sharing electrons. So our book is going to put a little squiggly line, partially positive on this side, partially negative on this side. So this right here, this positive-negative distribution, uh, constitutes a dipole, or all that means is we have a polar bond. If anything is bonded to itself, let's go back over here. 
hydrogen if it's bonded to itself. And because there is no difference in electronegativity, each hydrogen pulls electrons with equal ability. This would be a non-polar bond. Because if I take 2.1 minus 2.1, the difference in electronegativity values is zero. That's going to be true for any molecule that's bonded to itself. So oxygen, O2, looks like this. Nitrogen, looks like this. And chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, each look like this. So anytime two atoms are the same, and they're bonded to each other, we're going to have a symmetrical, not lopsided, but we're going to have a symmetrical or an even distribution of electrons, or an even sharing of electrons. And we're going to see uh, what that has to do with a molecule being polar or nonpolar.